All right, I figure uh, a tutorial's in order uh, to, <laughs> to operate this thing, uh, since there's a lot going on here, but this is the RMMVCOM LP with the launch platforms attached. Uh, we've got our uh, target flying around in the background, and we'll kind of go through the setup and uh, operation of this thing. I'm just going to jump in the cab here, use the key to start it up, and then turn on the electrical power. We can tow all this forward. Um, the reason the missiles are spawned with the truck is because anything that's spawned at the same time is considered part of the same vehicle and won't be detected by the radar. If you do spawn a bunch of uh, additional launch platforms and use them um, with the truck, uh, if they're spawned separately or with another vehicle, then uh, there's a good chance that the radar will lock onto them um, as it's uh, rotating. Uh, so you'll have to find some other ways around that, but the easiest way is just to spawn it all together. Uh, so once we were set up, um, I'm going to get out of the truck here and lock over to one of these guys and throw down the support pistons and then unhook it from the next in line. And while I'm over here, I'm going to set the launcher code. Uh, any four-digit number or two-digit number will work fine. Um, this, is, uh, this determines what frequencies they work on, um, and uh, it also helps uh, you know, scramble the code to some extent uh, with... Um, uh, for some anti-jamming measures, so uh, I'm going to call that 50, we'll uh, pull this forward a little bit more, and uh, make this one. Uh, 51, I think. Toss down, support distance, and I'll get set it as 1. Alright, that's set up. Pull the truck forward. I'm using the uh, one and two keys to uh, shift up and down here. And uh, I'll just get it over here. Sorry. I'm going to probably <laughs> not put them right in line where they might you know, hit each other. But uh, Alright, so we're going to park it over to this seat, deploy the support system. We've got the WASD keys we could use to. Uh, level out the track, and then we'll deploy the radar dish. And uh, now that that's how we can get over here and drop down a little service ladder to the uh, radar cabin. Turn the light on here. And we'll get in the radar seats, turn the system on. By default, um, it'll pop over to, uh, to here. We'll uh, center map to get us to our position. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, we can use the WASD keys to manually tilt the radar up so we see our target. Then I hit the two key to yaw lock. And uh, you can see this, this changes when that's on. These lights, uh, uh, pink is pitch, Y or yellow is uh, uh, yaw for, for which radar is uh, locked up at the time. Um, you'll notice for small targets like this, um, the, uh, the signal strength can be kind of low if it gets below 0.1 radar will lose the lock uh, and we'll be able to detect it. So different craft will detect better or be detected better. Um, you'll just have to, you know, try different craft. It's sort of a trial and error thing. Uh, I think what's happening is um, some of the subgrids get detected and it will pick up a door or like a, you know, some kind of small part instead of the bulk of the craft. And that's why you'll see this bounce from like 2 to 5 to 0.1. Um, it's super annoying, and I wish they would implement a better radar, you know, detection system that was a little more uh, reliable. But it's really just meant for, you know, treasure hunting in the game. We're sort of using it <laughs> for like a purpose that it's not intended for. So I, I totally get that it's not perfect. Um, and uh, when you're using this, you'll sort of get the idea too. It's sort of a, you know, we're sort of stretching the, the limits of, um, of what you can really doing the storm and radar and stuff. But anyhow, uh, to continue forward, you can, uh, uh, once it's locked on yaw, you can hit the four key and lock it on pitch. See so the lock pitch is on. We'll start to get some uh, contact data, um, the X, Y, and the altitude of the, uh, uh, these are GPS coordinates of the, uh, uh, to get the contact. And uh, when we have a good lock, we can start to arm one of our uh, launchers. So we pumped in our 5-0 code there, 
and I'll connect it to our first launcher. We'll see that it's got two missiles ready. Uh, right now, the missiles are set to uh, active guidance, so they'll use their own radar on board the missile uh, to guide it to the target. Um, if it doesn't have a lock, it'll just dump fire and go straight. Um, but the real beauty of this system is being able to use a semi-active mode. So uh, what we'll do is we'll turn the launch system on. That will uh, bring this 5-0 launcher to life. And uh, it's aiming toward the, uh, the XYZ coordinates of the target that the truck is picking up right now. Um, and, uh, and then there's a little bit of a, uh, you can adjust the, the lead. There's a target lead setting it's on the launcher itself. Um, uh, so the real beauty of the system is being able to do uh, semi-active, which is where the uh, the missile's being guided by the truck. Um, that's great because the, the truck has a much wider field of view than the missile does once the missile gets closer, especially given APN guidance. If your target's moving, the missile will try to uh, aim in front of the target, um, and uh, and then you can you know you can it can blind itself uh, in active mode sometimes by leading too much and losing the target. Um, so we'll swap that to semi-active and prime the missiles. Priming uh, pumps the batteries uh, full of electricity. Um, the missile isn't really set up to go to sleep. Um, the method I'm using is just exhaust its small little battery, and then when you need to use it, you prime it, and it fills it up for a minute, and you're good to go. Um, so once this helicopter sort of turns back around, um, velocity changes and stuff, there's a lot of... Um, uh, limits to the system. Um, if you do a lot of heavy maneuvering near the target, that can be an issue. Uh, but as long as you're moving in one direction, you know, gradually, not doing too many velocity changes, generally works pretty well. We'll try to fire off this here. Let's see how it does. Alright, almost a hit. For a uh, smaller target like this, active guidance might actually work better. We'll fire one more off and see how we do it semi active. It sort of depends. There's two modes for different purposes. Another one. All right, and we got a hit. Looks like it knocked off the blades. Great. So that was the semi-active mode. So you can kind of see, um, uh, you can play with the different types of homing guidance. Uh, see, you know, what works best for your target. Uh, you'll see this emptied out the launcher. If we pump in our 5-1 launcher, that's ready to go. Uh, and it has uh, two missiles ready to roll. So uh, that's kind of the system as a whole. Um, just some after notes. Um, there is this awesome uh, ESA radar, um, but uh, it's really kind of a placeholder until Jim gets his new uh, ground radar up and going. Um, it can work. It does. It's fully functional, but the dish you know can't be in rotation mode. Uh, it's using the uh, the second small radar that's up top here. Um, so it's, it's kind of just strapped on right now. Um, and uh, let's see, there's a fun little just, just video chair here, uh, just for a second player to uh, you know be spotting targets uh, from afar. Um, the system as a whole, um, it can you know it can reach its 20 kilometer range dish, but you'll need a really big target. So I'm really you know thinking it's more capped at the two kilometer range. Um, especially given that the missiles are pretty limited in range. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers all the stuff. So you'll see the, you'll hear that the engine's kind of uh, cranking low. That's a sign that the generator's on, so it'll, it's got an automatic generator. If you leave it running, it'll manage its own power. Um, and, yeah, that's just about it. Uh, I'll, you know, Follow us up with some documentation you can read, but uh, that will be the uh, tutorial in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.